what affects the price of gold? We're going to be discussing commodity price floors and how this relates to the gold market. And this will need to feature the shutdown rule, which is an economic theory and is very well placed when discussing commodities. When it comes to commodities, there is a price floor. And this basically means that if the price falls below a certain level, then certain fundamental changes will happen in that market and prevent the price from falling any further. And this is all to do with the cost of production. And this is where the price floor is, because if a commodity such as gold falls down in price and goes below the cost of production, then a lot of the mining companies are going to start to shut the mines. And you'll see this first in the high cost producers, because depending on where the gold mine is in the world and the type of gold mine, every company will have slightly different production costs. So it will be the high cost producers that go out of business first. That will start to lead to some supply being taken out of the market. If that's not enough to abate the selling and the downtrend in the gold price, then even the low cost producers will become quite vulnerable. And if they become loss making, then what could happen is the whole supply of gold to market will collapse. And this is something called supply destruction. The shutdown rule tells us exactly how this process works. What a lot of people probably don't realize is that if the gold price falls and makes a mine unprofitable, it doesn't mean that that mine is just going to shut down. And this is the key to understand in the shutdown rule, because you need to differentiate between a mine's variable costs and the fixed costs. The variable costs are the costs that will change with the level of output. And a classic example is fuel, because the busier a mining operation is, the more machines are being run, the more fuel is being consumed. If you reduce your output, what you'll see is that you're using less fuel. So you've cut your cost. And that is a variable cost because it changes with the level of output. Other things are such as hiring extra short term workers and offering your full time workers additional hours as overtime payments. If you're not operating your mine as you was before because you're slowing down production and you don't need to offer these things. So as soon as you start to or the mine starts to make a loss, it's going to reduce output because it can cut some of these costs. But with the fixed costs, these are things that have to be paid whether the mine is functioning or not. If you close your mining operation down, you still got to pay your fixed costs. And these are things like insurance, interest payments on your debt, and also paying security to guard the assets of your mine. And this is the key to understanding the shutdown rule, because sometimes it's better to operate at a lower level that covers your fixed costs rather than shutting down the mine and then burning through cash because you've still got those fixed cost liabilities. So what the shutdown rule predicts is that as long as when the gold is being extracted from the ground and sold, as long as there is enough revenue coming into the company that covers their fixed costs, then they will be better off producing at a lower level. Because the other thing to bear in mind as well is that if you shut down your mine because the price of gold has fallen, if the price of gold in a month or two goes back up to where you would be profitable, you've got to rehire workers, and there's a lot of other costs involved. So sometimes it's best to just see out the storm and pay your fixed costs, but reduce output. If the gold price falls below the fixed costs, then the mine will be better off shuttering operations because you are just making losses and you're better off leaving the gold in the ground. So if we apply this theory to the real world, what it says about the gold price floor is that it's roughly equal to where the fixed costs are for the big low cost producing mining companies. And if we ever see the gold spot price fall and stay below this level, then what will happen is that the global mining supply for gold will collapse. Some people might question, though, the role of inventories in this, because if mining supply worldwide shuts down, there's still enough gold held by central banks and investors that can be sold back into the market to fully offset quite prolonged periods of mine closure. But what I would say about this is that why would investors with large gold holdings, why would they sell at a time when they know that the price of gold is so low that no one is mining it anymore? It's unsustainable. 
gold prices must go back up because the cure for low prices is low prices. So why would you sell in that environment? Why wouldn't you try and buy as much gold as possible? So even though in theory there's enough supply that could come out of inventories to make up for the loss of mining production, in practice is that going to work? Because why would you sell at that time? And just so we can put this into practice and have a, a rough idea of where the, the price floor for gold is at the present time, you can go through annual reports of the biggest publicly listed gold miners and they will tell you what their all in sustaining costs are for producing gold per ounce. So in 2021, the key major gold producers had all in sustaining costs of around 900 US dollars to 1100 US dollars per ounce. So even though the gold price is way above this, it tells us that if the price of gold fell to that level, then what you would see is that supply would start to dry up and gold would find a natural floor.